Get your drink, yeah, boo. Dr. Nandi Palma, good man, And then she saw him, and she was sitting next to him, shoulder to shoulder. <sighs> One thing that I established about Uprince, Uprince likes videotaping. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am not against multi-dating. In fact, I think you should date. I think sometimes in life, okay, you must listen to comprehend. Don't listen to just hear what's being said to you. And I'm done, right? They have no fault or flaw in them being there. And then you're going to come and be like, you're, Ibile, you're not my child. Ah, get out of here. You chose to stay. So deal with your demons. The people who struggled and went through a diff difficult time. The people who crawled just so that you could run. Just, just do the right thing. That, just do the right thing. Oh, you've been talking and it's hold. It's hold. That indota must, indota must, until ning. Then you'll be sitting there, indota must, indota must, not achieving anything for yourself. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is I, it is Gatleo Malela. It is just Gatleo. That's all it is. Welcome back. It's another video. I am excited to film this one. It's been a long day. Okay, and I'm looking forward to filming this and having a good time and laughing and chatting and doing all the Lord's good work because I need a break. Okay. Welcome back. We're doing another controversial trending topic segment. And I put up some things, you know, prompts on Instagram and on the YouTube community space tab thing. And I said to you guys, what would you guys like my opinion on? What would you guys like me to talk about? What has recently been going on that you guys would love me to talk about? And man... I got some really nice ones. So I'm looking forward to this video. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you're here, why? Why? Please do so. Please subscribe to the channel. Let's have a good time. Let's enjoy. Get your drink. Yeah, mm. Yes. Yes, Mirlast. Yes, my darling. Okay. This first one says, hi, Katleo. I hope you're keeping well, my virtual chom. I am choms. Chom choms as I am, my darling. Um, well, what do you think about the still existing anti-black hair policies at school? I'm super saddened by African ladies who helped draft these racist policies because how else do the other race know all the names of the hairstyles we do? Huh? Let me tell you something about that. <clears throat> I hear that chat. Um, for me, I find those anti-black hair policies absolutely ridiculous. I find them to be quite regressive. Um, quite a number of schools still do this to the day. If your hair is out and it's bushy and it's afro-y and all of that, it's seen and uh, perceived as unkept, which are you serious? Have you seen a good looking fro? Are you joking? Are you joking? Which one is it? Have you seen a great looking fro? And which parent would take their kid to school thinking that, yep, yep, yeah, you're looking a little bit like Vegeta. You're looking a little bit like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. You're good. Let's go. Every single parent makes sure that at least when the kid goes to school, their hair is kept. And this includes black hair. This includes dreadlocks. This includes uh, 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 afros. This includes braids. Batung body body tabrete. Angila what body tabrete body. Somebody we said tabrete. Do they still or do they call them box braids now? Ne. I think they call them box braids now. I don't know what they call them, bro. Um, all I know is that 
I find it to just be quite regressive. It's going backwards, man. I mean, um, the kid's hair has nothing to do with how productive they are at school or not productive they are or how they how well they're going to do in their tests and curriculums and all of that. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, who remembers Winnie Madigazella Mandela Jr.? Junior, junior, junior. Do you remember that girl from that school in Pretoria who was just like me and my hair? Mm -hmm. Don't touch my hair, you know, don't touch my hair. So for me, I find it, uh, it's ridiculously regressive and I don't understand why it should even be a thing. It does perpetuate racist um, uh, thought processes, terminologies and all of that. It's absolutely ridiculous. If Britney, okay, can go to her school with pigtails on her hair, okay? Then batung mantua, le 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 masabata, le 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 rato should also be able to go to school with their dreadlocks and should also be able to go to school with their afro and all of that. As long as it's clean and we ain't seeing no grass up in it or some things, you know, popping out during the day. <sighs> hey, cat. Would you please share your views on Pearl and the Zimbabwe issue that has been trending? My darling, you know, if they ever said, you know, Pele, Pell, 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 I think what Pearl and the other uh, 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 um, South African celebrities or influential, influential people that went to Zim at around that time were a little bit tone deaf. And I, and, 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 and I mean this in the most respectful way possible. Yes, you can say someone is tone deaf, but not disrespect them. I think it was a little bit tone deaf because are we not watching the news? Are we not aware what's happening in Zimbabwe at the moment? Why would, and, and you know, Pearl came out and she said, you know what, guys, guys, gents, gents, mamela. Now I was invited over there to showcase the beauty of the country and to bring it back and talk about it in South Africa, you know, talk about the beauty of the country and all of that. I hear that chat, but I don't hear it in the context of what is currently going on in that country. And considering the fact that that country is a neighbor to ours, it's not like Zimbabwe, it's on the other side there by, by, by a Maldives or something. Oh, okay. It's not like uh, 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 Zimbabwe is is on the other side of the world, like go go by the Maldives and the and the Falk Islands and things like that. It's not. It's like right next door. At this point, we know more as South Africans what's happening in Zim as opposed to what's happening in China. Come on, in terms of what is being broadcast on the news so i think it was it really truly was a little bit tone deaf i understand that maybe it's a tourism kind of initiative where you're being invited by the country there are many other countries that are doing tourism initiatives hello dubai hello maldives hello 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 they are doing tourism initiatives where they invite out influencers influential people celebrities where they say listen come experience our country Talk about it, vlog it, Instagram it, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so I think it was slightly tone deaf to know that the people of that country are struggling, absolutely struggling. And here you are, and, and they're struggling because of the particular ruling party. And here you are going to the country and saying, well, here I am. Da, da, da. It's a little bit tone deaf. But in the same breath, um, we know the struggles that a lot of artists are, are confronted with in the country. Okay. We're talking actors, we're talking, uh, musicians, we're talking all of this. So getting a gig, because one thing we know for a fact is that she didn't go there for free. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. She didn't go there for free. She might not have mentioned it to us that, you know, okay, maybe I was paid a really, you know, solid, really just beautiful sum of money to go there, it's fine, she doesn't have to, okay? I think talking about money is a little bit inappropriate, but I think we also do have to be cognizant of the fact that a lot of artists in the entertainment industry in South Africa, whether you're an actor or whether you're a singer or all of that, it's tough, it's tough. And coming out of COVID, 
it's tough. Even though the, 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 the concerts are there and all of that, but it's a slow and, and the acting gigs are there. It's a slow and steady kind of progression to get to where you used to be before that period. So, man, if people got to put bread on the table, yeah, no, I understand. If people have to put bread on the table and take their kids to school and keep the lights on and pay bills and all of that, I hear it in that context. Uh, would I still do it to, with, with Zimbabwe? No, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Uh, 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 many other countries, sure. But with Zim particularly, no. Especially when I have friends that live in Zim and share with me how difficult it is. That side... And now for me to be called into Zim as an influencer to, to project the beauty of the country and all of that when I know that my friend is really going through it, I don't think it's something. But then again, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ethics and morals kind of thing. And you can't expect everybody to have the same ethics and morals like you. Oh, you on Instagram... The first one says, oh, Instagram was a little bit spicy, as it always is. Instagram is always spicy, so let me just have my drink, okay? Mm. Just absolutely, just yes. Okay. Can Christianity and African spirituality, having a relationship with your ancestors, coexist? I absolutely believe yes. I do. Even though we we have this thing that there is no higher power than God, there is no higher power than the Alpha and Omega, I'm going to get there. Yes, this is true. However, I also do feel that we do not have, we have a very, very, very selfish God. Absolutely. But I do not believe that he will not understand the fact that you still choose to respect and and practice uh, 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 processes, procedures, uh, rituals, and all of that for the people that have come before you in your family lineage. I don't think he's going to be like, you are going to hell because you support your ancestors and you don't support me. No, I think you can absolutely have msebeti, mkete, a traditional affair at home on Saturday and wake up the following morning on Sunday and go to church. Because I do believe that even though we have the God that we have, he's not going to be judgmental in the sense that, oh my God, what you're doing is a punishable offense. You go to hell. You know what I'm saying? I actually don't believe, I think that's ridiculous. I think that know, know who the God is. Know who God is. Know who you are praising and speaking to at this time and how you approach speaking to them ancestrally and Christ and and religiously god for me personally still outweighs my ancestral backgrounds and traditions absolutely rate him higher than that i hey amen come for me if you want to come for me but that that's what i'm saying and that's what i mean and as i said what i said okay i said what i said when i supposed to say so so basically my whole chat is know that they can coexist without one, without you feeling like you are uh, degrading or being disrespectful to the other. I think knowing how to make them coexist and approaching them with the reverence and the respect that they both deserve, I don't see where the problem is. I really genuinely don't see where the problem is. It's okay with um ketik or hai. It's okay to do um sabans, um sambanzi at home and then go to church the following day because you still want to talk to God and you still want to come to God in the place of worship. But at the same time, you still remember your grandmothers and your great grandmothers, your great great grandmothers, and the people that have come before you on God's given earth, God's granted earth to pave the way for you. The people who struggled and went through a dif difficult time, the people who crawled just so that you could run. Do you know what I'm saying? So for me, nah, I don't see a problem. I don't see a problem. I have an issue, how to how, 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 how
Because I don't think even where the alpha is sitting, he's on some, yeah, do that, that's fine, that's cultural practices. No, because her lawyer and witchcraft and whatever is intended to hurt or harm the next person or to, 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 to doing snacks things so that you can progress in life. Whereas doing a msebeti, I don't know what you would call msebeti, doing a msebeti to thank the ones who have come before you and incorporating God into that? What, what is it? What is the problem? Sex on the first date and broke men that control relationships. Sex on the first date. Okay. I've spoken about this before in one of my Candid with Cat videos where I've said, I don't have a problem with sex on the first date. If the chemistry is there, it's heated and whatever, and what, you're a grown up. I don't see what the issue with sex on the first date is. Just do it right. Okay? Just just do the right thing. That just do the right thing. If you don't know that person, and it, it depends. How long have you been speaking to that person and all of that, blah, blah, blah. You can't just be speaking to someone for a day, then you go on a date tomorrow, and then ta-da, no. There's a lot more that pulls someone sexually outside of how attractive they are or their looks and things like that, that would pull them to them and be sexually attractive, attracted to them. There's a lot more. And how can you discover that in a day of having known that person? No. But if you've been talking to that person for three weeks, you know, you've been talking and it's hold. It's hold. Yashisa, yashisa. Stofo siko nine. Stofo siko nine. Then, how? Oh. You're grown. You're a grown-up. At this point, the point of being a grown-up is to do whatever the fuck you want to do. The he whatever the hell you want to do. Just make sure you are doing it the way it works for you and in a good, safe way. Aparajasi. Hey, man. Don't come here with us and say raw is law. Raw is not law on the first date. Forget about it. Forget about it. If you don't get it, forget about it. Okay. Get out of here with that, please, man. Uh, Nandipa and Tabo, that court appearance, my goodness. Dr. Nandipa, my good man. <laughs> oh, Dr. My good man. You know, it was one thing when we were seeing Mr. Bester in his Balenciaga's and his Louis Visions and his, his Balenciagas and his Louis Vuitton and all of that. It was one thing seeing him like that behind a, a, a you know, on a TV, you know, on a, on a, on a visualia, you know. It was one thing seeing him like that behind the screen, you know. And I think even for Nandy, you know, even for the good doc, no, not good, not good. Even for the doctor, eh. Uh, Seeing him behind the visualia, uh, the, the, the screen, the uh, this and the third, um, that, that may have possibly made her think, Phew, how is it Zami, my daughter? How is it Zami, my daughter, my daughter? They always do this. They always, they always randomly show up around my place. All right, let me just... Let me just. So my whole chat with uh, Dr. Magudimana is that... Uh, I, you know, behind the visualia, it's one thing to see your man and, and just think, oh, he's in Dozami, my daughter. Oh, he's in Dozami. Oh, Totsaka, my daughter. But he's over there. He's far, so you can keep your composure. You understand? She was very much composed. She was very much composed. And then she saw him, and she was sitting next to him, shoulder to shoulder. <sighs> Yay! You know when they say puppy dog eyes. You know when they say, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the one. This is the one. Hey, Nandipa, gangster love. Huh? Huh? Kiki, 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 Except they were not medaras and, <laughs> and all of that. It's like gangster love, man. She had them puppy eyes. She was just like, oh, oh. Right. Ah! 
when he looked at her, when he looked at her, and he was like, oh, right, man. Oh, right, man. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right now, I, shish, I miss you too, my goodness. Ah, Nandi. Yay. <laughs> you cannot tell Nandi fuck on about Besta. And if that was the moment where we saw it. That was the moment where it was real. You know, think about the Nandi Pa who was approached by the, 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 the private investigator when she was sitting and having her toast, avocado toast. You remember that Nandi? And she's like, mm-hmm. And the guy was like, yeah, so you are owing 750000 And then she's like, mm, okay. No, I'll have to talk to... She was like this. Stoic, straight, A to the point. You understand? And then she saw her man. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Hey! Hey, Nandi Pa, Nandi Pa, it's a con girl. Irrespective of whether I am in the jailhouse. Yeah, Dave. Whether I am in the jailhouse, out the jailhouse, whether I am doing a makeup in the jailhouse saloon and, and, and all of that. Tabo. Tabo is still my man. My man, my man, my man. Tabo, it's still a man for me who belongs to me. I don't care dizzy about anything else that had happened. Go to a Tabo. Yeah. Science video. The, the mental danger reverge. The mental danger that revenge can cause. All right, let's get into it. So. We know Cyan, okay? And if you're not South African, you wouldn't know who Cyan Bourgeois, <laughs> who Cyan Bougie, Cyan Bougie, you wouldn't know who Cyan is. But may, just Google her, Google her, go on her TikTok, go to TikTok, you'll find all you need to find. So we saw this a video, and I'm really glad that, firstly, before we get into my thoughts, right? Um, I'm really glad that South Africa has the laws that it has, which when it comes to revenge porn. And I personally think she should take his ass to court. Take him to court. Take him to court, right? So now let's go back to the video before we add the prince, right? So, 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 so Usayen uh, appears in this video in her very most private moment, because let's not even lie, Lewena. Luena. Okay, Lerato. Even you, sometimes you take the new deals. Sometimes you take the nudes for your mans or for your partner. And even you, so sometimes you take the, the, the DICK pics and you send them. So it's not an unusual thing that people recall themselves in the throngs of pension. Okay? So for me, at, it wasn't... I, I, I had a bit of a cringe fest watching it, right? I, I, I just had second embarrassment for her, knowing that if I'm seeing this, oh my God, how many people are actually seeing this? So, Grand Sharp, okay, we saw it. Um, sex is sex, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? My Instantly, I was like, there's a lot going on there. All right, there's a lot going on. Um, I didn't think about all the other things that the people were mentioning about her, her, her private areas and all of that. I didn't think about that. I, I, I don't care. Instantly, what I jumped to was who took this video? Obviously, the person who was zanging zang. <laughs> Obviously, the person who was doing that was uh, 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 taking the video. But who is this person? Who is this because we know for a fact that this Muloi, who took this video, either sent it to friends or sent it out to his friends or whoever to brag about the fact that he tapped Cyan, or he's the one who dropped the video for the public to see. He is the one who released the video. So now I'm thinking those two points. Then Bujio, Bujio comes out and she says, not you, Prince. Not you. And I'm like, not Prince. Prince, Prince. I, I was just like, not Prince. Not Prince. Prince is always involved in these scandals. So one thing that I established about O Prince, O Prince likes 
videotaping. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you like videotaping if you had all of that going on? Man, she, <laughs> I get it. To a certain degree, I get it. To another degree, I'm just like, Prince, come on, man. You're doing too much. Stop, man. <sighs> oh, Prince likes videotaping. <clears throat> and, 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 and that is okay. That is okay. Uh, when you got what you got going on, fine, Prince. Cool. Whatever, man. Do your thing. But, and then I sat with it and I thought about how Prince is always trending for all these nasty stuff, okay? If he's not trending for his music, which he's exceptional at, I love his tunes. Wonderful. Siagbongelo and a prince. But, my chat is every time you are trending, you are trending because of them dang. You are trending because of them dangy rangy, okay? You're trending because of your ta da. And it's, it's a ta da. It's definitely a ta da, you know, you know. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so then, so then to me, it became problematic. I was like, nah, Prince, you're a little bit problematic, bruh, because uh, it's one thing in the, in the previous case where we saw his tada, we know that he, he wouldn't be the one to drop his tada. Okay. He wouldn't be the one to drop his medang for social media to see. So someone did that to him. Right. So, so she, she dropped that. Or whoever dropped that in terms of getting back at Princey Princey. But in this instance, it has me thinking because Cyan was like, okay, Prince, you're gonna do me dirty like that. So that's when I saw her no le prince no stu man. No problem, Hur, you decided to take a video clip of Cyan and do your business with Cyan, whatever. But if you didn't drop this video, if you didn't leak this tape. Who did? And if that person leaked the tape, why are you sending other people? Why are you sending other people your tape of you doing this with this young woman? And the fact that Cyan was 19 and Prince being 45, 55, I don't know how old Prince is, that's fine. That's not the point. The point is why are you doing that, Princey Prince? says a lot about you. If you didn't drop it, someone you sent it to dropped it. Why are you sending a sexualia of somebody? Hmm? What the so it had me give Prince the get out of here. Get out of here. Especially Okay. ZZ Muloko was trending Muloko was trending for dating multiple men before choosing her husband. I saw this, I saw this, and uh, Zizi is a fellow content creator, as am I, and uh, I thought it was absolute hogwash, okay? Let me tell you something, I am not against multi-dating, in fact, I think you should date. I think sometimes in life, okay? You must listen to comprehend. Don't listen to just hear what's being said to you. Listen to actually comprehend. She was multi-dating at the time. Does that mean Hori, she was rontarising with all of those people she was multi-dating? No, it doesn't. And if it does, it's none of your damn business. But often, a lot of the time, dating is not associated with the fact that you are doing them dangaranga bedroom affairs with all of those people. Are you joking? Are you joking? What do you even mean, bro? So, what pissed me off was the fact that people took that multi-dating and then was like, oh my God, Woo, but bam dim, no we hampe. Oh my God, how dare she? No, that's not what it means. Sposeso. Wabana, when you can stop pushing lockchain management, stop pushing lockchain management even when you are comprehending. Try and think. Multi dating does not necessarily mean that. And in actual factualia, okay? They were seeing separate people. I don't remember anyone 
actually addressing the fact that the husband could have potentially been seeing other people. Then they dragged him into this. And that, for me personally, upset the living daylights out of me. That pissed me the F off. Because I was just like, why him him taku? Why him him taku? Abuto is not in the social media light. Abuto is not in the and nothing and nothing. If you're going to go for Zizi, for whatever unfounded ridiculousness that you are going for her at, go for her. Why are you involving her husband? Because in my chat, it's that Zizi is the influencer. And as influencers, we know that at some point we're going to be dragged for breathing. So everything that we say is going to be put under a dis, a microscopialia. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything's going to be put under a microscope. We get that. But nothing about what Zizi said was wrong. For me, I didn't see any problem in it. So then you have Bob Penuele who are deciding to dissect the fact that no, Zizi went to... So this means that the husband was a simp. Really? Really? No. That is someone who when he wants what he wants, he wants it and he made for damn sure he got it. He got it. Because when you can't buy a flight ticket or send flowers or, or send a money or do whatever the hell the husband was doing for Zizi while she was in Cape Town and he was in Joburg. You can't even do it to a Joburg hun and you're in Joburg. Now you want to be calling that man? No. That, my darling, is a man. Come at me sideways. I don't care. I don't care. I found that to be completely ridiculous. I'm sitting there thinking, are you serious right now? She is talking about her relationship. Now you need to drag her marriage into this. She was talking about dating and how she grew up and all of that. Now you're pulling receipts about what kind of person she was in varsity and all of that. And I'm just like, yo, yo, yo. This is one of the reasons why I hate social media. We do what we do, but sometimes I could sit here and talk about how, oh my God, he cheated on me, and he cheated on me with this girl three times, and you're going to find the problem with me. All because social media. That's probably what you're going to think about me. Forgetting that this person is the... Are you kidding me? Like, to me, it actually angered me on various levels. On various levels. I didn't even care to engage with what the narrative was of her when she was in varsity. I don't care. Who limpori le shem kaya zizi? Limpori le wankutwa? Eh limpori le shem? Um, what's your take in on indota must? Indota must do what? <sighs> that should tell you what I feel about indota must. <sighs> Why aren't you doing it yourself? Oh, I labora. Do it. Why is the thing in Dotamas? In Dotamas pie, in Dotamas holiday, in Dotamas food, in Dotamas uh, bags and lunch and, and, and fancy labels, in Dotamas. Why are you not doing it? Ah, Sambora. Yo. Koga, you can go through life preaching that in Dotamas, in Dotamas, until Ning. Ushem, then you'll be sitting there in Dotamas, in Dotamas, not achieving anything for yourself because you are waiting on in Dotamas. Or you will sit there alone. Okay? It's true. You will sit there alone struggling to find a decent relationship, a halfway decent one, because you are believing in in Dotamas. Maldives, in Dotamas. G6, in Dotamas. Continue with your in Dotamas. I don't. Couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. Women calling their husbands extramarital children their kids, yay or nay, and then it's a husband. It's a husband. So you chose, oh, extramarital. So you married him and he went and he had the kid outside of your marriage. Look, for me, I can't even think because I feel like if he went and he had a kid outside of our marriage, that constitutes a divorce, period, point blank. Uh, but for those who choose to stay, I mean, you, you had an extramarital affair and a child. 
was born from it, which essentially means hore. Ro is law. So you hit it, ka ro is law, and then that person got pregnant, and now you have a child. It's one thing when you have an extramarital affair. It's one thing when a child comes from it. Uh, for me, I wouldn't stick around. But personally, for those who do, and they say, it's my child too, they made the choice to stick around. And I find it honorable for the very same woman to say, Hore, that's my child too. I find it honorable. I don't find it dishonorable for the ones who choose not to say that's my child too, because I get it. The child comes from an extramarital affair, is a product of an extramarital affair. So if she, the wife, doesn't regard the child as hers, she doesn't. However, it's how she responds to that. If you're going to treat the child poorly or be disrespectful or whatever, you can't just say, it's not my child, it's my husband's child, fine. But don't mention things like that in front of the child. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Sintao Lele, don't be rude. Come on, you know, be the grown up. If you decided to be the grown up and stay, then be the grown up and do not expose a child who has no flaw and no fault in them being there. I got a I'm done. Right? They have no fault or flaw in them being there. And then you're going to come and be like, you're, Ibile, you're not my child. Ah, get out of here. If you're going to say those things vocally like that to the child, maybe it's best you should have left. You don't have to say the child is yours. You don't have to say, oh, our kids. Oh, my child. You don't have to say that. That's fine. You don't have to say that. But in the same breath, don't be disrespectful. You chose to stay. So deal with your demons. You chose to stay. I get sharp. Grand sharp. The unrealistic expectations put on content creators to be role models that they didn't apply for. Absolutely. Why? Why? I didn't apply to be a role model for your child. But if I am, thank you, child, for, for seeing me as a role model. But then you cannot go off at me when I live my life a certain way, because I'm young and I'm beautiful, and I decide to live my life the way I want to live my life, and then you come at me and be like, yeah, Honache, you are my daughter's role model. Okay? And so because I'm your daughter's role model, what must happen? What must happen, mom? What must happen? I am still human. I am still young. I do still go out and enjoy hubbly bubbly and a smoke and this and that and the other. I still do whatever. What is the problem? Am I not supposed to do that because I am now a role model for your child? Did I impart that role on myself or did you? Or did your child? It's unfair, especially when I don't have a child of my own. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, can we talk about how obscenely invasive subscribers are? Very much so. Sometimes very much so. You know when someone pops into your DMs and is like, what's the color of your lipstick? What lipstick is that? Um, hi, maybe? Hello, how are you? I'm having a great day, thanks. Are you? Like, really? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, it, subscribers tend to be a little bit invasive. We are sharing what we are sharing. Um, and sometimes I understand that subscribers look at us and they think, oh man, she's the girl next door. I feel like she's my friend and this and this. And thank you for seeing that when you see us. But at the same time, I think um, if you wouldn't ask your friend a certain question, why do you feel the need to ask it to someone you do not physically know? You don't know them from bar soap. Um, this thing with cyan bougie, little girls having lived such scathing lives in front of us. What happens when you get to 30, 40? Like what will be left of you if you never leave room for yourself, boo? Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Y'all might hate me for this one, but I absolutely agree. If you are already doing this and going nuts, crazy wild and all of this and that, blah, amen, each to their own. But what happens when you get to 35 or 40? Because life doesn't stop. More than anything, life starts once you hit your 30s and your 40s. So um, um, not in the sense or her reputation or uh, she's used goods. Not like that. I mean, I'm just saying it in the context that there's a still a whole lot of life to be lived. Take it easy. Take it easy. 
Give yourself time to heal in between relationships, in between all of your moments, the bad moments, the down moments, whatever. Take some time off if you need to. But if it's that, 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 you are going to be tired by the time you get to 30. Physically. Physically, mentally, everything. Just be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And for a lot of people, they really start enjoying life from 30 upwards. For a lot of people. Because the 20s is so filled with imposter syndrome and it's filled with, 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 with you know, feeling lost and confused and all of that. It is. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my controversial takes on trending topics. Um, at the time of this video, these things have been trending over the last couple of days. So if there's something else that you would like me to talk around or to give my opinion on in terms of what is trending, please comment in the comment section down below because that's where I'm going to look first. If not, if you don't want people to see your name, that's fine. You can drop me a DM on Instagram. I normally take screenshots and I save them for the next video. So until then, and thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please give the video a like. Let's try and get the video to over a thousand likes. And until the next one, I'm going to go keep well be good and i'll see you in the next one be kind i'll see you in the next one sayonara